Since I built my gaming PC, I've always kind of wondered if I made the right decision as far as cooling goes. So the cooler I put in this computer is an NHD 15S made by Noctua. And I've also had some water cooling around, but I, I've never used it in this PC. I really wanted it to be as quiet as possible. I wanted to try air cooling. And that's what I did for this PC. But ever since I built it, I've always been wondering in the back of my mind, did I make the right decision? So this is the gaming PC. When I play video games, this is the guy I use. And it's pretty good at what it does. This is an i7-8700K processor on a Maximus X Hero motherboard by Asus. It's got a 1080 Ti also by Asus running the graphics card, and it's been really good. The fans all around are by Noctua, and for the most part are very, very quiet until they ramp up to just the absolute maximum. It's been a good PC, but I've always wondered... Can I get the temps on the CPU down? Now, the i7-8700K i7 is a tough processor. It's very hot. It's six cores. This one's overclocked to five gigahertz, and it just gets hot. So today, we're going to take a look. We're going to compare temps between the Noctua and the Corsair H115i AIO. It's a liquid cooler, all-in-one liquid cooler. We're going to take a look at these two devices, see which one does a better job of cooling down this processor. So a couple of notes real quick is that NHD15S is similar to an NHD15. However, it has one difference. It's a little bit more compatible with my setup. So basically what they do is they move the whole cooler up a little bit and they only include one fan. So the fan that came with it is the brown fan that you see on it. And the other fan is one of Noctua's Chromax fans that I ordered separately and added to the system. And I actually removed the kind of tan and brown fan because it just looked terrible. Uh, and I'm vain like that. <laughs> so I have been running it in a one fan configuration for quite a while. For this testing though, I decided to run it in the one fan configuration and then again in the two fan configuration. And it's not gonna be totally scientific. I just wanted to get baseline. How good is this? So as far as the environment goes, it's 72 degrees in here for all the testing. Um, most of the testing has been about the same length. I did run the Noctua on both tests for about 15 minutes, but the Corsair I'll run, I haven't run it yet, I'll run for about an hour or more. I wanna see those temperatures stabilize. I wanna actually see the water inside the radiator hit its maximum temperature and see where it sits after that. So I'll run the Corsair on a much longer test than what I ran the NHD 15S. Because this is an air cooler, it heats up much faster, it kind of stabilizes much faster than what you'll see out of a liquid cooler. So with all that being said, let's put the cooler inside the PC.
All right, we've done it. The Corsair cooler has been installed, the Noctua has been removed, and all the testing is complete. All the testing was done using Ida64 because it's easy and it records temperatures for us easily. Uh, so I just went with Ida64. I did three tests. I did the Noctua with one fan installed. I did the Noctua again with two fans installed. And then finally, I did the Corsair 280 millimeter all-in-one unit and I did that one for about an hour. So the Noctua, actually the first Noctua test I did was only for about 15 minutes. The second one was for 20 minutes. Uh, and then the third one with the Corsair was for about an hour. The reason the Corsair one was so much longer was because the liquid in the liquid cooler, I wanted to give it time to stabilize in temperature. Uh, using the Corsair software, I was able to see it do that. Also, with the Noctua cooler, I was able to just set all the fans to 100%. With the Corsair cooler, I used Corsair software and they actually have a fan curve based on the water temperature. So I wanted to give the water time to hit the max temp it was gonna hit. It ended up, I think, coming up at 37.7 degrees maximum and then stabilized for the, at that temp for about a half an hour. Uh, and then it ran the fans at basically 100% for that half hour. So let's take a look at these results. The Noctua with one fan installed, the max CPU temperature was 79 degrees. The max single core temperature was 96 degrees. Single core, there's six cores inside of this processor. The hottest that any single core got was 96 degrees. Uh, with two fans installed, the max CPU temperature as measured by Ida64 was 78 degrees, one degree cooler. And the max core temp was 93 degrees, three degrees cooler. And then with the Corsair 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, we got the stunning result of a max CPU temp of 79 degrees and a max core temp of 96 degrees. So basically it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I was using one fan or two fans on the Noctua, and it didn't matter if I was using liquid cooling or air cooling. The simple fact is that the 8700K is a hot chip and it's very difficult to take that heat off of the chip. The way the 8700K is constructed is there's basically the chip here, then there's a layer of thermal compound, and then there's the IHS, the heat spreader, the silver part of the chip that you see on the top of the chip. And then you have to put more thermal compound on top of that, and then your cooler can finally stick down on top of that. So between the cores, the actual processor, which you're trying to cool in the cooler, the thing that's doing the cooling, there's just too many layers of stuff. This could be resolved by Intel if they used better thermal compound or if they found a way to get the, the actual heat spreader closer to the actual chip, but they're just not doing that. They, they, don't, they don't seem to be interested in doing that. So the solution is to delid the chip. And I was talking to Ryan from On Air PC this morning and he's actually gonna send me a delitting kit and some liquid metal to replace Intel's thermal compound with. So we're gonna rerun this test because what we learned today was that it doesn't really matter what cooler you put on the 8700K, once you overclock it, you're really just limited to how fast you can get heat through the thermal compound and the IHS. It doesn't matter what cooler you're using because the chip just won't let the, it just won't let the heat out. So. If you're just gonna run an 8700K at stock, then you could compare these two coolers pretty easily, right? They both are gonna perform exactly the same. This one costs $80, you add another $20 if you want a second fan for it, or the Corsair costs $130. The nice thing about the Noctua is it's very, very quiet. The Corsair is louder because, you know, it's got two fans and a pump as opposed to one fan. And I'll be honest with you, I run this fan at like 100% all the time in my gaming PC because I don't hear it anyway. <laughs> so there's no, why, why not, right? If you're just going to run a stock 8700K, then, you know, the Noctua is a clear choice here. And you can probably find a cheaper air cooler, to be honest with you. There's no real reason to go with an all-in-one cooler aside from aesthetics, which are cool. I mean, it looks great inside there. The case is more open, it just looks cooler. But I wanna rerun this test with the delitted chip. So that's what we're gonna do next, right? Once that delitting kit comes, we'll delid the chip, 
we'll rerun the test and we'll see, you know, what's the difference between a Noctua and a Corsair all-in-one with a delitted chip. I suspect there will be some difference, but maybe not. We'll have to wait for that video to find out. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.